Hey Falcon fans, um, I wanted to show everyone uh, what I'm trying to do here. It's been, it, it's seen better days, however from what I understand any replacement steering wheel is nowhere near the quality of this one because it doesn't have the steel uh, or metal inside frame. And they're over 250 some odd dollars I think to uh, replace. So what I wanted to try and do, give, my hand, give myself a hand at repairing what we had here. So um, I, I've already done a lot of the work, but I thought I would uh, stop where I'm at to show everyone, hey, that you can do this as well too. I've never tried this before. I've watched several YouTube videos and uh, I thought I'd give, give it a hand. So this is the, um, uh, I said the steering wheel. A at one time it was uh, blue to in match the interior of the car. Not sure if it was the original steering wheel to the car because uh, this color here, uh, this brown, this gray, seems to be uh, what the color may have been, um, but it doesn't matter. It was repainted. Uh, I did, I did uh, quite a bit of scraping and I got off almost all the uh, blue that was on here. You can see a little bit right there and somewhere here in the groves here. So we've already gotten past that. Um, I have uh, well on my way to using a, a Dremel tool to cut out all the grooves and everything. Uh, you can see right here, this is the style or the uh, cutting bit I'm using, eighth inch or less, 330 seconds or less. You can also use uh, this style here, uh, but I found that uh, that one is so pointed, digging into the metal or hitting the metal a lot, and it was dulling very easily, so I just thought I'd use the round one. Not sure if it's the right one to use, but it's the one that I'm using. So as you can see, what I've done here, I've already cut out and grooved out a lot. Every, wherever there was a groove, I have uh, uh, taken that out already. You can see here, uh, most of them go down to the metal frame. Um, I've gone all the way around here, and now I'm working on the inside. I have uh, these cut out um, already here, and I've only got a few more to do here, and then again, over here. So let me just give you a little example of what I'm doing. Your workplace uh, um, from getting really, really dirty and stuff. Just go ahead and try and scrape off some more of the blue paint that's on here. Uh, again, that stuff really needs to come off because that is uh, definitely not a good bond. It wasn't done well when, the, when it was painted. But As you can see, this is um, a really painstaking process. So uh, what I'm using is just, just using... ...did the steering wheel beforehand, didn't rough up this surface in between or they didn't sand this, so it's a pretty weak bond between the blue paint and the existing paint beneath. The, the bad part is that once I redo this, I'll be sure to use fine grit sandpaper on it. The, when I repaint it blue to match the interior of the car, um, that it will actually stick this time uh, and it will hold up to wear and tear. So what I'm doing next is um, wet sanding this with 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, I wanted to get this fairly smooth before I start filling all the cracks and everything um, with the uh, metal epoxy, basically JB Weld. Um, so uh, um, the, this paint really is pretty tough. Um, and it's actually harder than the material that the steering wheel is made of. Uh, so um, you need to make sure you take care here, uh, but I'm going to be sanding for a while, but you can More wet sanding. Do my first round of cleaning. Um, just using water and an old rag. You know. What I'm doing now is just taking this wire brush and getting a real clean bond uh, from when I put the uh, epoxy in there. I've already started to do some fixing of the epoxy. So the stuff I'm using, quick steel, similar to JB Weld, and that was uh, what uh, they recommended, at least uh, on other YouTube channels, another thing I've read is to use something like this. I think the key is you don't want anything that exactly 
expands with heat um, because it expands with heat it's going to actually crack. All right, I'm pretty close to kneading this. Um, it only needs less than 30 seconds or so. So you got to work in small batches because uh, otherwise you'll be wasting a lot of it. Um, this section here, roll up kind of like a ribbon of it and put it in here. It's not very easy to work with because uh, it tends to stick to your fingers. Um, so, uh, and I'm having to leave what I think is too thick of um, a ribbon on here, but my alternative is to make it too thin, then I have to fill it in, and I really don't want to have to stick this stuff onto itself. So um, I've chosen to go with a little bit thicker, and then <clears throat> take my chances of having to um, uh, sand it down with a Dremel and needle files and uh, everything else. So um, put this section in here. As you can hopefully see, um, the actually one good thing is it starts to set up. It gets a little easier to get in place and it gets a little harder. It doesn't stick to your fingers as much, but um, it still sticks to your fingers uh, no matter what. So I did find out that uh, denatured alcohol is one of the things. I'm sure there are several others um, that will get it off of your, of your fingers and such. All right, we're ready to do, ready to do the last section here. I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. Again, if you know something better than what I've been using here is this quick steel. Uh, by all means, use it. 